I'll try my best to get through with this. Um, you know, there's a lot of people in here trying to teach people things. You know. And their motive for wanting to teach people things, especially cars, is to hopefully get subs and get views and make money. Caring about whether they teach anybody anything is the last fucking thing on their mind. And then you get the individuals that just do what they do because they do it. There's nothing in it for themselves. And they hope in some way, no matter what they're talking about, it'll reach someone and be of some help in their life. If not today, maybe someday in the future. You know, we all make mistakes, man. I've made some. Some I was able to live with, some I've never been able to live with. And it's for that reason I wasn't about to make the same mistake twice. Uh, Uncle Felix was put down today. And I went in the room. And I was petting him and he was looking up at me. And... Uh, he was very calm, very calm, just looked at me. And I gave him a kiss from the head. Well, he took his back leg and put it in, an injection in it. And he slowly closed his eyes. He kind of shook a little bit. And then he went still. I did it because I didn't want to make the same mistake I made a long time ago. I've always loved animals. Some ways I love animals more than I've... I've cried more for animals than I have for many people when they died, let me tell you. Ever since I was a kid, I had gerbils, hamsters, skinny pigs. We had a dog. We had a collie and my father, I know it's Connie, he named her Lassie and... She was a good dog. She lived to be 13. And then, uh, later on in life, I was married, had a couple of, a couple of daughters, and, uh, and I was heavily involved in the military. I'd be home for a few months and then gone and home and gone. And then I had three stints for three and a half years and three deployments playing over in a sandbox. In the Middle East. Hold on a second. And, uh, and I had a good friend. He was a Massachusetts state police officer. And he was canine. And he had his dog, his partner, Maggie. She was a Belgian shepherd. She was big. She was almost 90 pounds. You know, when they get to be a certain age, they retire them. And because of their training and what their purpose is, they don't adopt them out to just, you know, um, they can be considered dangerous under certain circumstances. And so there's kind of like only a couple options. One, they'll kennel it. Then it lives out its life in a fucking cage, pretty much. They give the officer the opportunity to take it, and then he has to sign off on a lot of responsibility with this dog to make sure it doesn't bite anyone. And, and the third option is they put him down. You know. I used to go by the house to see him. He had an apartment. Didn't own his own house, and the property owner did not want him to have this big dog that he called Vicious. And Maggie could be very vicious uh, under certain circumstances. But for whatever reason, Maggie loved my daughters. And he had to keep her kind of hidden. The landlord kept telling him, you got 30 days to get rid of the dog. You got 30 days. 
unless you're going to be evicted. And, and I go by to visit, and uh, Maggie loved my daughter. She'd lay in the floor, flopping her back with her paws up, my daughter's rubbing her belly, and Maggie loved my daughter to death. So one day I says, bring Maggie by my house. She came by like on a Sunday afternoon. My yard was all fenced in. I had a pool and all that for the kids. We let her run around there. You know, Maggie had a blast with my daughters and me and my wife at the time. Great dog. Great dog. And it came time to leave. You know, because she was always in the house. You'd take it out and do her business and then back in the house. You couldn't leave her out in the yard in case something happened. He was on the verge of eviction. The landlord had given him so many fucking chances. When it came time to leave, Maggie didn't want to leave. You know? I looked at Scotty. It was his name Scotty Owls. We're still good friends to this day. I looked at Scotty, I said, let her stay. When she's ready to go home, I'll let you know. Well, she never went home. She found a new home. Best dog ever. Best dog ever. Company would come over. She'd approach them, sniff. When she got to know you, she was fine. You know? Remember one time, I'm sitting on the couch and Maggie's next to me. I'm eating some pizza and I'm giving her some pizza. The phone rings. I tell him I got some guys trying to sell me some home security system. And as I'm on the phone, I'm saying, listen, I'm okay, you know. Uh, I'm quite capable of protecting my home here. I don't need to get into my background in the military. I'm quite capable of, you know, keeping my home secure. And something happened, and Maggie let out a growl. He said, what was that? I said, oh, that's my other home security system. Her name is Maggie, and I started laughing. Uh, and then I had to go back. I had no deployment, you know. My wife would tell me what, what, when I was gone, Maggie wouldn't sleep at night. We had a three bedroom. Each of my daughters had their own bedroom. And at night, when they'd go to bed, Maggie would lay in the hall between the two bedrooms and she'd stay awake all night and periodically get up and go over into Brittany's room, go over to her bed, sniff, go over to Chelsea's room, go over to her bed, sniff, and go back and lay there. She'd stay up all night watching them. And then when they'd leave for school in the morning, it's when she'd lay down and sleep. She watched out for her daughters all night. She lived to be 13, you know, with big dogs. They tend to get problems. Other breeds don't get. They tend to get arthritis, especially in their rear hind hips and legs. And then she was having difficulty walking. She started falling down. Could no longer go up and down, even the three stairs in the backyard to go out into the yard. She'd fall and roll over and she was hurting herself. And Took her to the vet. She was in a lot of pain. I was giving her pain medication. And I really tried to prolong it. The vet said, you know, I know you don't want to do this, but she's really suffering. She's really suffering. She's in constant pain. She's giving her pain medication. You know, and I just did not have the heart to put her down. I couldn't do it. Then it got to a point where I had to. And when that day came, and I got her to the vet, they put a lead on her, and they were petting her, and she was very friendly, but she was old and so sick and so much pain. And they led her to the back to give her the needle. And the vet and his assistant looked at me, and they said, are you coming? And I just didn't know what to say to him. You can come, you can be with her. And I said, no, I can't. And I left and I'll never forget. Walking out of there and getting in my car and coming home and thinking about how 
this dog that loved us as much as we loved her. The last thing she saw in her life was strangers. She must have been scared in a room, strange place, strange people, not knowing what was happening. And looking around for one of us. And I wasn't there. That mistake haunts me to this day. I should have been there for her. I wasn't going to let that happen with Felix. I went in, and uh, for some reason, it's like, it's like he kind of knew that Betty even told me, he said, he doesn't want to be, he, he's in a lot of pain as well. You know, the tumors, that hurts, it, it, he's in pain, he's sick and suffering, and uh, put him on the table, and it's like, he really didn't put up much of a fuss, he just kept looking at me, looking at me. And he rested his head on my arm, and I was petting his head as they gave him an injection. And he kind of shuddered for a second. The vet told me, he says, the initial reaction will be he'll kind of shudder a little bit. He may even re relieve himself, his bowels. Then his heart's going to stop and only take a couple of seconds. You know. And he died on my arm. It hurts. I can't correct the mistake I made with Maggie. Letting her die alone with strangers. But I was able to not let it happen again with Felix. If you have an animal that you love as your family member, as they should be, we call them animals, but here they're family. And if something should happen where you have to do what's best for them, even though it's what's worst for you, to help put them out of their suffering. Be there with them. Be the last face they see when they close their eyes for good.